Hey, everybody. We have a, a special edition of our workshop today. Um, we have a special guest um, that uh, um, uh, we're going to uh, be visited by uh, Tiki, the Scarlet Macaw. Um, so to get us started here, um, I am going to, um, we're going to have some, some group community announcements. And um, then I'm going to give a little workshop on drawing um, the, the, the Scarlet Macaw's head from this angle, from this angle, and from this angle. So, so side, front, and three-quarter view. And then we're just going to go full on to the Tiki cam. Um, dear friends, I'd like to introduce everybody to Tiki. 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 Hey, Tiki. Hey, Tiki. We're talking to you. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. It's going to be a good day. You're getting a lot of attention today. Yeah. Um, and um, it's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, special um, thanks to uh, Sharon Phoebe uh, for bringing on our little pal Tiki today. Really, really appreciate that. Um, so actually, let's first hear from, from uh, Shannon and Tiki. Just say, give you a chance to say hello. And then we'll jump to Melinda and Ivea. Hello, everybody. I have uh, got my um, long-term pet here, Tiki, uh, to share with you all uh, so that uh, we can practice sketching from a live bird. <laughs> if he'll, he'll be moving around quite a bit. So, uh, you know, just do lots of sketches and go back to the same, uh, the same uh, position when he, when he finds it again. <laughs> That's the best way to approach that. So um, he's in good spirits today and he enjoys the company and the people and the voices. So hopefully he'll be good for us for this, this period of time. Uh, my name is Shannon Phoebe, by the way. And uh, uh, I've had Tiki for, I forgot to count how many years, but I can fill in a little bit of his biography. He's an older macaw uh, and uh, um, yeah. So hi yeah. to everyone. And we're going to get to hear a lot more about um, as as we're sketching um, Tiki. Um, Shannon's going to be telling us a little bit about um, uh, owning a macaw and the responsibility with that. A little bit about uh, macaw conservation and um, about the pet trade. Um, some important things for us to have on our radar. And Tiki's agreeing with that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I'm going to now uh, bounce us over to a. Um, a shared screen here. And are we looking at a page that says Scarlet McCall? Uh, yes, it was there, but uh, Jack, I need to make one correction. Uh, Tiki is a blue and green. A blue and green. Ah. He's a blue right. and green McCall. I know it's, it's contra, you know, it's just the opposite of what you expect because he is so red. But he's called the blue and green because his uh, feathers uh, of the wing and tail are um, well. The, these are the real the the big long tail feathers, and there's the blue on them, and there's green in his feathers. So he's actually a blue and green. A scarlet would be all red with yellow uh, stripes across the. Oh, wing. neat! Wow, this is <laughs> this is this is um, I, I I love learning new stuff. Um, so um, let me now, um, we're just going to do a little bit of a workshop here on um, getting your macaw on. And I want to encourage everybody to, as we are, as we are doing this, to on your, um, on your piece of paper at home, just sort of follow along and take sketch notes make a bunch of little sketches. So rather than just thinking of this as, as some ideas to, to, to help you be able to draw that you'll apply once we start all drawing together, um, instead, um, start with, hold on a second, I'm trying to plug a few things in in the background right here. Um, instead, put, the, um, put your, your, piece, your pencil to work and as we're going along here, just make a lot of notes. That way, when we get to live parrot drawing, you're already warmed up. So think of this as your warm up. We're going to be taking a look 
a little bit on the inside to help us understand uh, why these critters are so macossum. Um, <laughs> look at that, just little body, big head. At the back of that head, kind of the block of the head, there's your, your neck, your, your spine coming out there into a remarkably small body. Um, the toes are pretty cool. You've got two toes forward, um, two toes back. And the beak is a really unusual apparatus here. So with most bird beaks that we're familiar with, um, we have, hold on a second. Um, this, the, the upper bill, the upper part of the bill here is, um, it can move a little bit, but it's mostly locked in place. But on a parrot, right up in here, there is a really flexible joint so that this bill can move. Are you making a sketch of a macaw skull right now? I hope so. Yep. All right. Um, so what, we, um, what we've got going on here is this, this big hook, this upper portion, and it is hooked into this box of the skull. The eye is fairly large inside of there, but on the outside, the eye, you're only going to be seeing about this much of it. So um, even though there's a bigger eye behind the scenes, look at this large lower bill. Notice that the, the jaw comes and bends down here. So when this jaw opens, right, from a pivot back here, right, so this comes up, over, and down, we're still going to come up, we're going to come over and down, um, the, uh, what you're going to be seeing is this part here, right? Um, whoopsie, whoopsie. So think of this lower part here as swinging down from a pivot here. So that will help make a little bit of the motion of the jaw make a, bit, a little bit more sense. Um, this upper bill can swing up just a little bit, and we'll be taking a closer look at that as well in just a moment. So from the front, it's, it's old business, so it's old as big beak. So think of this as a big triangle of the beak. Nostrils are tucked into the top of it. And the upper edge of this is usually going to be hidden, sometimes with a little sort of flat platform here, here, and here. Let me clear this, and we're going to go on. Oh, yeah. Um, we're going to uh, jump on to the next. There we go. So this is a diagram of the... Uh, movement in that upper part of the bill. This is what's called cranial kinesis. There is a bone right, whoops, not you, spoiler alert. Um, there is a bone right back here called the quadrate. Now your quadrate bone is a part of your ear, but this, um, this and in this bird, it is part of the jaw. And so the quadrate bone, um, as in snakes, the quadrate bone is attached to these sort of support bones um, on, the, on the upper jaw. As the quadrate swings forward, it moves this upper bill up. So you're able to move your upper bill up um, much more than most birds that uh, are, are going to be able to do. For most birds, you can think of, you know, if this is my skull, you can think of that upper bill yeah, basically being... Um, being a, a, a fused onto here, and all the most of the motion is going to be with that lower bill swinging down. You do get a little bit of motion. You'll see that when a baby bird is really opening its mouth wide, you'll see a little bit of this upper bill flipping up, but much, much more so with a with a parrot.
Underneath the feathers, there are some large muscles that operate the lower beak. The lower beak, very, very powerful. How many pounds of pressure, Shannon, can um, our little friend put down on that beak? We will find out soon. Sorry, I, I'm mute, muted because when he screeches, it can be uh, dis distracting. Oh, but it's uh, also so kind of cool. Okay. <laughs> so normally, right. I, I would be like, yeah, let's mute that. But for this okay. parrot, we can keep okay. this parrot unmuted. Um, okay, I will. Uh, it's about 80 pounds of pressure. I mean, that's, right. that is crazy cool. So it's all, it's all kind of locked in in this big nutcracker shape. Yeah. So the bottom part of it, you've got, you know, big... Whoops, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> um, here we are. Um, so the, 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 the bottom part, we have big muscle coming in here. We have another uh, muscles coming in over here and another one that drops down in this area. And what's that going to do? That's going to make your head really boxy. So you have this box with a hook sticking out. I is going to be on the outside presents smaller than it actually is on the inside there. Um, but this is just sort of a, kind of helps us think about what is going on uh, underneath the hood there. Let's put a layer of skin on top of this. So this is not a macaw. Oops. Uh -huh. uh, what's going on here? Uh, clear, clear drawings. Uh, you can reshare the screen again. I'm going to try to reshare that. We're going to come. Hello. Hello. Rah. Uh, Rah. One moment. Oh, see, the, the parrot noises really add to the show. <laughs> okay. I, I like it a lot. Um, I'm gonna escape wow. this. Okay, now I'm going to be able to reshare that screen, share screen. There it is. <clears throat> Diki, don't get, don't get stressed out about these little bird faces in front of you. You're about to see somebody that can look a little bit more like what you're, you're used to seeing. So this little one here, um, this is a little, uh, a little uh, parakeet here who forgot to get dressed in the morning. <laughs> Notice that we have the sort of boxy head. There is a, you know, a, one kind of interesting way of thinking about the, uh, the, the, the beak area here is we have this big um, slice here, then with a little hook on top of it. But just notice that the lower beak is really contributing substantially to the look of it. The ear is a hole in the side of the head right out here, so no external ear. This is going to be covered up by feathers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, how this looks with, with feathers. So remember that big boxy head look? big boxy head look. So we want to think of, oh, hey, come on back. Okay, mm. here we are. So what I've got is, is a big boxy head. The front part of it is going to be where you have beak sticking out. Over the top of that, there is a big, there's a layer of sort of dense red head feathers that comes down just behind the nostril on either side. So you can think of this as sort of, there's a, there's a cap that goes all the way across with a little bit of a protuberance down on the side. There is a large patch of feathers on the cheek over that ear hole, and those will often have a little bit of a different shape to them. And the skin around the face, the skin around the face uh, is going to have these little tufts of feathers. 
And notice that there's two different patterns. There are kind of lines in here, and then there are lines that are swinging around down here. So you want to think of this as two different patterns. And then around the eye, you're going to have bare skin. All right, let's all at home just block in this basic shape. All right, with your pencil, we're going to block this in. All right, um, so uh, there's you know one way of initially kind of blocking this in might be to say, all right, I have I have kind of a roundness of my head up here. Why am I using red? I mean, of all colors <laughs> to. Um, to, to, to use here for, for this, all right? All right, so we have this block of the head. There is this cone of a beak that is sticking out in the front of that, the bottom of which has our little hook on it. There is a little keystone here of white tissue, so keystone sort of shaped zone in here. Right, and that has set into the, the 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 top of it, rather near the front. There's our eye in there. Now let's look at sort of the other patterns on the face. So here is here is this sort of this top. Let's change our color again. So you have there is the top of your head is red, and that's going to tuck down on either side of your beak. We're going to swing around the back of this, and we're going to divide the rest of this. So there's white tissue around the eye. The top part here is these lines that come down. The bottom part of that, we're swinging around the eye. Oh, sorry, okay, swinging, you know, curved lines around the bottom of that. The feathers on the head are extremely expressive. Right. So, um, the, so the crown feathers here, those can be smoothed down, sleek down, or they can pop up. So here they are popped up. The nape, that's the back of the head, can separately pop up, right? And those little lines going around the face, if it pops those feathers out, it completely changes the look and the pattern that you see on the side of the face. So each one of those feathers is attached to its own muscle that can move that feathers and they'll often move that, that feather and they'll often sort of move them as a block, move them as a group. So as we're here, if um, Tiki flexes for us, you can, you'll be able to see these feathers pop up, and then you'll see them sort of as not uh, sort of often kind of starting from one end to the other, then whoo, flatten themselves down again. They regularly do this when they're preening and socially interacting. So there's a lot of visual signaling that parrots do um, to each other. Here it is from the front, right? So smooth down and not so smooth. Look at just, it's really fun to see. Oh, yeah. It's fun to see these little feathers just sticking out when it's all in full fluff. Um, so here we also, uh, you know, let's, anytime there's a new bird on the screen, just start sketching it, just start a new drawing and kind of block this one in. On this, Let's just take a closer look at the eye itself. Notice that there's sort of rings of tissue going all around the eye, starting smaller, getting bigger, and it's bare around the eye. The eye itself is also a major source for signaling when they are more excited. The size of their pupil will change from a little one to a big one. In addition to that, when they get excited, macaws blush. 
macaws blush. So take a look at the white around this eye in C, compare that with the pink around the eye here. So in addition to flashing your pupil larger and smaller, you can also see um, as their moods change, you'll be able to see the, um, the skin around the eye there um, changing its color as, the, as it blushes. From the front, let's think of this beak. Here's my, the central axis of my beak. But I want to think of my beak as, I often sort of think of it as kind of a ball in here with a cone coming down from that. That allows me to get this little change in angle right there. So I right, slightly wider here. So an easy way of thinking that is the ball and then you're gonna taper that ball into your beak. The lower beak from the front is making this big, bold, black scoop underneath that. So from the front, these little black sides in here really are going to pop this, this beak out. And also notice that the eyes themselves are on slightly raised little bumps here so that um, you will often see these eyes sort of sticking out a little bit on the side. This gives the bird better peripheral vision. This bird has dropped its bill down but I wanted you folks to be able to see the eyes. Again, really that sort of eyes poking out on the side, but different sort of face expression here. Let's just go back to that last one. So you get a little bit, oops, a little bit of, whoa, ah, a little bit of that, um, that white on the side, sort of big, big black. So that, that the shape of the bottom bill, I think it's a really fun thing to kind of look out for. This one is also showing you um, it's uh, two toes forward, two toes back. That's a good look. In the three-quarter view, and you're going to be seeing this view a lot, what you want to do is, I'm just going to, whoa, I'm not going to, I'm going to get my drawing tool back. <clears throat> All right, so this is the general location of my head, and it has a beak that is hanging down in front. What I want to do here is to pay a little bit of attention to how the feathers wrap around that beak. So from the three quarter view, you're going to have feathers that are coming up on one side, sort of matching kind of the edge of the top of that beak, going flat across the top. And then there's that spot that comes down this zone in here on the other side. And then you're gonna go back. This area up in front here also sometimes you can get, if it, you can just raise these feathers up. So sometimes you'll get kind of just a little kind of bonus bump right up here, sort of an Elvis pompadour sort mm -hmm. of thing. So getting that beak kind of in your three quarter view position, um, you want this side here, this little tuck around here, that little tuck around there where instead of the beak, coming down here and I and my feathers come up to the top of it, you're gonna be tucking those around the far side. So that little bit here does a lot, this little zone right in here, does a lot to just turn this head towards you. I have a tendency to draw my beak way too, way too big, um, just because it's fun. Anytime there's a sort of a really prominent feature on a bird, a lot of us will tend to do that too big. One last thing on this three quarter view is I'm going to just draw a line up the middle of the beak here. Right? If I were to draw a line up the middle of the beak, it would be not on this outer edge because I'm looking at it in the three quarter view. That then hits this part here. That's the middle of my head sticking up there. So you want to kind of think about the middle of that head if there's any kind of display going on um, 
where is that relative to the beak? So that point in there, the middle of the beak coming up and the feathers tucking around the far side, that's gonna be very, very useful for us in getting our three quarter view position on this bird. Now, here's my challenge for you. Draw it from the side. Let's just give that a try. On your piece of paper, notice that, that this, this, so we've got three quarter view position. Here's their center line coming down here. And you have that, 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 that horseshoe of little feathers around the top, dropping down before the eye. Let's get that in there. Get that far side tucking around. So that's the center of my beak. Here's the center of my, my, my head coming up. So we're getting this sort of droop around there, getting that, these relationships right in there. Is going to do a ton for um, helping kind of fix this three quarter view head into your bird. Also, notice because it's three quarter view, the eye is much closer to this outside edge. So we're not seeing a lot of that head down there. We know there's a lot more red feathers up there. So, what a lot of us would tend to do is draw a lot more head up there. But this is not what you're seeing from the center. And with that, we're going to go to tiki time, right? Mm -hmm. So it is now tiki time. And what we're about to do is make tiki big on the screen. Here's what's going to happen. Is tiki going to be posing for you? We don't know. <laughs> I doubt it, right? Tiki's got, tiki's doing the tiki thing. All right. So if you're if you if you see the back of the head, draw the back of the head. All right. Uh, we will try to if if Tiki decides just to do this on us, we might turn Tiki's chair around. Um, but, oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh man, see you're so cool. You're such a cool bird. All right. Think. I want you to first just imagine that skull underneath there. What is the skull doing? The little parry tunnel. <laughs> Right. But as Tiki is moving, here's what I want you to do is start picture number one. Tiki moves. Start picture number two in this new pose. You're going to be getting multiple poses all going at the same time. And when if Tiki comes back to this pose later on, um, you know, you'll find that Tiki will tend to do a pose for a little while. And then Tiki will go to a totally different pose. And when that happens, you start a totally different drawing. If Tiki comes back to this open bill, three quarter view, licking the tip of my bill thing again, we can drop back into this, right? But let's just get some, our, 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 get your Tiki on and we will, See what we can see. <clears throat> hey, Tiki. Hey, Tiki. Tiki. Ah, oh, see. Can you, can you, can you flex your feathers for us a little bit? <laughs> so get a few little, you know, oh, look at that. I mean, that's, that's so cool. Look at those feathers fluff up. So get yourself just a few little kind of placeholders for poses that you might be seeing again. No, no. Hello. 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 
<laughs> Shannon, this is one of our coolest workshops ever. <laughs> this is cool. He's being very good today. I'm really happy that he's feeling so sociable. <laughs> Uh, Tiki has, has had a, uh, he's actually fairly old. I did a little more research uh, since I last, uh, since I introduced him to Jack. <clears throat> and it turns out he may be closer to uh, 35 years old. <laughs> uh, he had a, a long start uh, before he came to us and we were kind of a rescue family for Tiki. Uh, he, his uh, mistress uh, was a vet tech and she was caring for him and and uh, they were bonded uh, but she made the mistake that these birds are lifetime uh, mate types so they will bond to a member of the household and that person is their surrogate so uh, his mistress and he were were closely bonded and she made the mistake of leaving him uh, for a weekend for a little journey of her own and uh, had a flat tire while she was gone and didn't get back when she thought she would. And although uh, there was a person who had a lot of these birds that would often take Tiki if they were gonna be gone for a while, she had not taken the bird to that, that gal. And that gal did a lot to help Tiki be a, a grounded bird. Uh, but he was already not young. He was already into his 20s. So uh, she came back from her trip and uh, Tiki being a big bird, they do have big cages and all of that, but they also pretty much move around on their own. So Tiki has the run of the house. He does have a large room that he stays in. Actually, he lives in the in <laughs> Uh, far end of the laundry room in his cage and he has his toys on you know on the cage and on the floor he'll get down and go play with his toys uh, and then uh, come upstairs and wander around underfoot and hang out in different corners of the house and so on so his mistress came and he came down the stairs from his home at her house uh, to she thought to say hello and he was unfortunately uh, unhappy. She had left him for so long. Uh, macaws are considered one of the smartest of all the birds. And, but unfortunately that means they have a, like a three-year-old temper tantrum. And you can, many of you can imagine what that's like, except it goes on and on sometimes with the birds. So of this, of this breed. So he came down, he was mad. And she put her arm out because you go step up with your arm and they'll step up onto your arm. Uh, so she reached out for him to step up and he reached out and bit her arm with that 80 pound pressure and broke both of the bones in her forearm. So uh, she no longer wanted anything to do with the bird and uh, justifiably so from, a, from one point of view in that matter. Um, that, to give you a, a an idea that that these are not animals to uh, to casually take into your life. They are animals that require a lot of attention and a lot of care, uh, especially of attention. And they will bond to a member of the household. Now, although Tiki and I get along quite well, uh, he's not bonded to me. Although he might have been in the beginning, but um, I'm a former teacher. I was very, very busy. And after I got him calmed into the household, I got swept away by my other responsibilities. And he suddenly decided to bond with my husband. <laughs> suddenly, in fact, Paul came walking by the cage one day. Paul was not interested in the bird, was not happy that the bird had come to our house. <laughs> <laughs> and wouldn't look at the bird and he was going past the bird and the bird looked at him and it was all over. The bird decided Paul was his bonded partner. <laughs> so uh, I'm around a lot during the day now. And so Tiki and I get along quite well. But if Paul comes home, uh, I have to get far 
because Tiki will it, it will make attack moves at me and he will hurt me and has hurt me. Uh, and that's part of what you learn when you take on a, 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 a very intelligent, very temperamental uh, pet. So uh, Tiki and Paul are the pair and I'm his uh, in-between time companion. Uh, so that's how it came to us. It's kind of a rescue from this household. She was not inexperienced. She'd had other big birds. And so she just had made a mistake uh, that she wasn't thinking clearly when she uh, so casually <coughs> reached for the bird. Now, when he came to me, and this is kind of interesting, I think he was furious. He was so mad to have been taken away from that household. He didn't realize that he had hurt her so badly. Uh, and so he didn't understand why suddenly he was no longer there. In order for him to acclimate to our home, I had to take, uh, not this, I keep this handy when I have the bird, <clears throat> because as I said, he will lunge and he will hurt me and has hurt me on occasion. So this is a leather coat that I can use to protect my arm. But when Tiki first came, you just saw him lunge at me. When he first came to us, he was so mad. You, he would lunge and go into attack mode for days. So I put on a Sherpa coat, which is um, a very heavy leather coat with a sheepskin on the inside. And I put it on backwards so that just my arms came through uh, like, like this. <laughs> And I kept my hands fully inside the, the Sherpa coat so that he couldn't get to my hands. And he would do just what you're seeing him do now, which is lunge and grab those sleeves and shake them and rip at them and spit them out and grab them again. And wow. I just continued to do that with him day after day after day until he finally allowed me to pet him all over with that coat on, by the way. <laughs> and pet him all over without that coat on. <laughs> uh, but that's when he finally calmed down and realized that we weren't going to hurt him and that he, that, you know, he, he thought he might be able to like us enough to get along. So, and from that point on, then he's been a fine bird, but that's to give you an idea of just how, um, how much of a feeling life uh, these animals can have. It's just incredible uh that um that their sentient life is so strong so in my house <coughs> i have lots of children uh three children and their friends and so tiki always loved the kids being around and he still knows them when they come over he knows their names he talks to them he gets all happy and bouncy as you've seen him be a little bit today uh so they have very long memories and they live um, between, um, I guess the longest lived, uh, lived uh, captivity macaw was 112 when he passed, but that was very unusual. In general, they live between uh, 35 and 70 years. <clears throat> they're very large birds and they're mostly very endangered. Uh, you may know about uh, the, the bird from the Disney Rio movie, uh, a blue macaw, which did go extinct in the wild. There are no more wild uh, blue macaws, but there are some that are in captivity and that are being bred in captivity. So thankfully they haven't disappeared from our world altogether, but all of the macaws are endangered. This blue and green that I have, he was domestically born. He wasn't a stolen bird, which did used to happen a lot in, in uh, the countries where these birds uh, naturally habitate, which is South and Central America. Uh, so, um, uh, he was not a stolen bird. There was a time when these birds would be killed, shot and killed and sold for their feathers. And indeed, I admit that I once paid $10 for a single tiki or a single macaw tail feather, which I don't know if you can see just how long this is. That was before wow. I ever even imagined having one for myself. Now, as all good tails go, when I talked to the Jack about it, I told him that his tail feathers could be almost two feet long. <laughs> well, I measured his tail feather and it's not two feet, but it is like one and a half feet long. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. from top to toe, they are, or to tip of, of, of the, um, 
of the tail. They are very large birds uh, and uh, beautiful, very beautiful birds. So that's uh, kind of the, the tail of Tiki, <laughs> no pun in, intended there, um, and the conditions of the, their life in the wild. Every one of the macaws is endangered, some more than others, and it is the result of deforestation, burning uh, the undergrowth, uh, changing uh, rainforest to, um, to cattle grazing land, so they are uh, struggling uh, to survive, but there are, are a number of people who are working hard, you know, to um, to protect habitat areas and allow some of these birds to continue to live in the wild. There's nothing more beautiful in my mind. I mean, I've seen a lot of birds, <laughs> and I've had some unusual experiences with birds. Um, <laughs> that uh, include even seeing the last two mated condors in the wild back in about uh, 1989, 1990 in a place in far Eastern Oregon. Uh, and of all the birds that I've seen in the wild and captivity, I think these birds are the most <coughs> beautiful when they fly. The way that they position their head and their back and their wings out and their tail stretched out, they're just absolutely stunning when they fly. Tiki, it does not fly. He can fly. I don't have his wings trimmed. Um, so he can fly and he has flown away a couple of times. <laughs> he can fly all right, but he can't land. <laughs> so oh. he kind of crashes uh, into the ground and he's a little, you know, befuddled by it all. Uh, so um, he's, he's just not, uh, uh, we don't let him go out wild like that. Um, let's see, I think there was another anecdote. Oh, this is a, a cute anecdote. Uh, there was a time when I was <laughs> keeping a lovebird for my daughter while she was uh, traveling uh, uh, in college. So she was gone for a long time. So I had the lovebird. One day the lovebird escaped from the cage and all of us here at the house were running around trying to catch the lovebird. Tiki was observing all of this, seeing us run hither thither, you know, to going after this little tiny bird. And all of a sudden he just opened his mouth, caught the bird midair, held it in his mouth. We all freaked out thinking he was gonna break that bird to bits, <laughs> but he had caught it so gently with his beak that when he saw us get all hysterical, he let it go again and looked at us all surprised, like, well, I thought I was helping. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, 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 we still had to catch the love bird, but it just showed me how amazing, uh, how amazingly sensitive these parts of animals that are extraordinary. Every animal has an extraordinary feature and just the incredible amount of, of skill and ability they have with that feature. So that big beak can be as wicked as can be and as gentle as, as enough to capture a lovebird mid air and not hurt it. So, um, uh, yeah, the uh, animals just have such specialization, all of them, each one has its own specialized aspect that allows it to survive, whereas what do we humans have? Well, we have a couple of hands which can do a lot, but they're, they don't come specialized in the first place. <laughs> and we have to really train all of that, whereas these guys, they just have it, it's just there for them and that's how they survive. It's amazing. That's that's astounding. Yeah, it really is. I'm not sure if there was. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, that's a, a lot of what I can say about him. The, it, the if you visit these birds in a pet store, for example, or uh, somewhere else, I don't recommend people purchasing and owning these birds. They're they're mm -hmm. um, they require very special care and a lot of devotion. So it's not something you, you do lightly, but if you have the chance to be up close, I mean, we've talked about the exterior of the, of the mouth and the, the beak, the, the horny beak, the nose. His nose is peeling right now. The nose uh, 
sheds like a fingernail sort of. So right now he's growing new nose underneath the nose that you see. His nose is also very long and pointy. That's a sign of his age, that he's an older bird. The younger birds have squatter, rounder noses, but inside that mouth is the most incredible tongue. <laughs> it has a flat tip and then a, a V uh, farther back and a hole very far back. It seems like at least the best that we can see. It looks like a hole back in there, which is part of, uh, I think, how he's able to manipulate uh, the tongue enough to speak. And he does have uh, a um, language. He's playing with the computer now <laughs> on my side. Um, he, got, he can speak uh, many, many things. Uh, when he came to us, he had very bad language. We don't talk like that, so he's dropped that language, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, but uh, uh, and he has been known to let me know when the phone's ringing, when someone's at the door. Uh, he's reprimanded the dog by name. <laughs> uh, that so is really funny. He totally interacts in the household. <laughs> yeah, right, the, you're you're missing just sort of the intelligence of these birds. Um, you know, the, uh, in the bird world, the birds that are kind of the best known for their bird brains, there's two different groups. One is the corvids, so that's the jays, the crows, that group. The other are particularly uh, parrot species that live in social groups. Yeah. And um, they, uh, there are uh, very, very interesting, fascinating studies with, with, with talking parrots. And uh, the species that's been studied the most in this is the African gray parrot. And by talking parrots, I don't mean parroting things that they have heard. I'm talking about actually using syntax and language to express complex ideas. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about parrots actually having conversations, not just repeating things, and uh, scientists sort of sat down to test are you just repeating things in, because we were very easily fooled by animals. The story of clever Hans, the counting horse, nice. is a famous example of humans being fooled by thinking that a horse could actually do complex mathematical problems, um, when really it was just looking for facial reactions um, about when it should stop stomping its hoof, um, but had um, lots of people um, befuddled about that for a long time. Well, but the, the what are called the Alex studies, it's a set of studies with an African gray parrot named Alex. Um, um, they were actually able to determine that Alex actually had what we call language and was using language to express complex um, ideas. Alex actually under, they're able to determine that Alex understood the concept of zero. Um, Alex was able to um, understand, you know, uh, you could put a, a, a bunch of objects in front of Alex and say, you know, how many are made out of wood? How many are made out of metal? How many are metal triangles? So taking these sort of abstract shapes, uh, such as what are you made out of? Um, what are, what is your shape? So not just a label for an object, but discrete characteristics of, of different objects. Um, Alex was able to uh, really uh, do amazing things. So I recommend to everybody the research of Irene Pepperberg and investigate the Alex studies if you want to kind of blow your mind about the thinking of another animal. If you think Coco has it going on, um, <laughs> you got to check out Alex. Well, that reminds me of another little anecdote that uh, uh, I'll share it. Uh, I hope you all laugh about it. Uh, so as I mentioned, Tiki had bonded with Paul and my daughter was graduating from high school. So Paul was at work, he was gonna be coming home uh, late. We were rushing to try to make sure we got to the graduation on time. I was all ready to go. Paul comes into the house, walks right past Tiki's, uh, cage and goes into the bathroom to get ready to go to the graduation. Tiki gets down off the cage, walks around through the kitchen over to the bathroom and says, what the hell? 
<laughs> because usually Paul would go straight to the cage and interact with Tiki. So there's an example. Uh, the, the macaws do not match that kind of facility that the African greys have. They are very incredible and, and must be more intelligent even than the macaws. Uh, but the macaws have it there too. <laughs> they it's not right. quite as quite as uh, 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 gregarious about it, I guess. <laughs> that right, is right. That's wonderful. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, so what I'd love to do is to um, open this up for for uh, questions from our community here. Um, uh, as we speak, I am allowing people now to unmute themselves. If anybody has, uh, we're going to start with just sort of any questions um, for Shannon and Tiki. Um, and um, uh, all you have to do to, to ask, oh, actually, first I'm going to just uh, bring on, um, uh, Hope, is it okay if I add you in on Spotlight? So sure. here, all right. <laughs> I, I think I just need to take a screenshot right now. Oh, oh, yeah. Say hi. <laughs> this is this is really fun. This is this is this is a special day here. We've got. Uh, Can you stand? Uh, Samantha and Tiki. Samantha. Samantha meet Tiki. Tiki meet Samantha. It's good to have you both on. <laughs> <laughs> Tiki looks like she could eat Samantha for breakfast. <laughs> oh yeah, well, that beak, that that point on there, I'm sure could do a lot of damage. Yeah, but she wouldn't. But he wouldn't. This uh, Tiki's a boy, and he wouldn't hurt another bird. Samantha doesn't like other birds. She's very territorial, and she's been known to attack Amazons if they try to get near me. Oh. She's bonded with myself and my husband, more my husband. Uh -huh. but she won't let another bird come near us. So Tiki is beautiful. What a gorgeous bird. Yeah, yeah. that is really is, fun. What happens to Tiki when you're gone? Uh, well, luckily, it turns out he's older than we thought. But yeah. nevertheless, my daughter and Tiki also have a very special relationship. Tiki it does very well with people with a very <gasps> calm quality about themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, both both uh, my husband and my daughter have that kind of inner calm quality. And so uh, Tiki and my daughter's name is Megan. They get along very well. And Megan has expressed uh, always the interest in taking Tiki when that time comes, if it comes. Uh, of course, it will come for me, but I don't know whether he'll still be here or he'll have already had his time too. But anyway, so that's within our household. You know, this bird has been uh, passed along several times before he came to us, which I think was also why he was so angry when he arrived at our home. And we don't we don't live with animals with that kind of consciousness that they're here and then we can just you know, Absolutely. be done, we're tired of them, go away. Uh, so uh, every animal that I have is is a, a part of the full integrated household of children and grandchildren and so on. Yeah. So I, I'm not worried about his future. You know. We've had Sammy since she was three months old and she's only 26, so she's a baby. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, that's uh -huh. fine. Well, it, it, it's fu really fun to see uh, both of your birds together here. <laughs> That's but just spectacular, spectacular. Gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, now, uh, does anybody have a, a question for uh, Shannon or Tiki? Um, if so, all you have to do is just raise your hand or use the raise hand function here in our, our, our chat. So you can either you know, make your turn your screen on and wave at us. Um, and uh, <laughs> I love the, the bird dance. Yeah. Um, does anybody have a, uh, I, I find myself doing it too, Walter, so I'm, I'm on my end, doing the, 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 the tiki sway. Yeah, uh, I think someone did ask if he has a favorite song, and I, I would need to say no. He just likes music. 
So he'll sing along to opera. He'll, you know, squawk along to jazz. Uh, he just likes music and rhythm and he loves the human voice. He loves to hear a real voice, not just, uh, you know, a record or whatever. So as long as you're singing along, he'll join right in. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, Heather's got a question for us. Heather, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, well, thanks for having Shannon and Tiki on. This is a pretty special uh, workshop. So my question already got answered. I was going to ask if Tiki likes music and if he has favorite music and does Tiki dance? You know, you see the cockatoos doing dances and I wondered if uh, if Tiki or macaws in general do the same thing. Uh well, tiki does not uh, in the same way that cock uh, cockatoos do. Um, they, uh, they're they different species altogether. And I've seen lots of those cockatoos do some really fun stuff. Uh, and so maybe macaws do. Uh, tiki came to us, he was already pretty old. So if that's something they do when they're young, did you do that when you were young? Uh, then uh, he hasn't done it during his time with us. No, he, he doesn't dance, but you've seen him do his, you know, neck thing and bounce around. I don't quite call that dancing in the way I see the cockatoos throw their heads and then splay their, their, their crown piece out. They're just so cute. Um, but again, these are birds that require someone who's going to be devoted to them. And if you're devoted to them, they will do the most amazing things for you. You, you, you show up for your bird and your bird's going to show up for you. That's right. Um, so yeah, I think it's something that you've really stressed is the importance if somebody is going to be uh, doing this, realize that this is, it is difficult. It is a major commitment. And um, you might, you know, it's just sort of like having a swimming pool. Better than having a swimming pool is having a friend with a swimming pool. Um, <laughs> because then you don't have to take care of the swimming pool. Yeah. Um, and the uh, sort of if you are going to, you know, take care of that swimming pool, okay, but you're probably signing up for more than you thought when you sort of imagine those pool parties. So the parrot very much uh, in the same vein. Yes, that was well. That's a good analogy. Uh, now you might occasionally hear a click, uh, and that's when Tiki uh, he does a something with his beak that makes little clicking noises. Uh, that's a sign of contentment, and they'll often make that noise before they go to bed. And in fact, if your bird stops, if you have this kind of bird and they stop making that noise, then you need to worry that they're not well or that they're unhappy in some way. Uh, so I've heard him clicking several times during this period that we've been uh, working together with the Zoom, and I'm just real tickled to hear it. Yes, because that means he's happy. Yes, you're happy. Are you happy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you'll see him coming at me sometimes, and that's when he's trying to groom me. He, that's another sign of affection where he'll uh, scrape on my shirt sleeve or uh, go after the snaps or buttons on my clothes. And in fact, there have been a lot of shoe uh, lace ins that have been chewed to bits by Tiki. <laughs> so that's another thing about this bird. I don't know about all the other birds uh, of this sort, the parrots, but I suspect they're all chewers. And um, when I was first reading up about uh, having a macaw, I was reading over and over again that they're just going to chew your house to pieces, the bottoms of your furniture, you know, this and that. And indeed, he's done his share of, <laughs> of uh, markings in our home. Mostly he'll get that beak underneath a little uh, defect in the, you know, in the molding or something and he'll pull it loose and then chew it off and you know nibble it away he, he chewed away a stair a stair step it was uh, just a basement step nothing special but he completely chewed that up we had to replace it uh, he was young the, younger that was in the first years when he was with us he's been with us a while now <laughs> and I should have counted that up before now before today but I forgot <laughs> I forgot to to check to see how long you've been with us Oh, I think, wait a minute, I could say, I think he's been with us since about 2006 or seven, I forgot, because that's when, that's when he bit his prior mistress's arm. 
Yes. Yeah. Does does anybody have a, a, a drawing that you wanted to share with Tiki? Um, so uh, Sandra, let's bring you in on this. Um, so this is art for Tiki. Um, Tiki, check this out. Yeah. Check you out over there, Tiki. Hey. Can you see that right here? Look over here. That's wonderful. Oh, that's really fun. It is, it's so much fun to get to put this, yeah. this red on. <laughs> we, we're getting, oh, we're getting a serious head nod there. Did you see that, Sandra? <laughs> a, a tea, oh yeah, we got a sway nod, like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's 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 the tiki sign of approval right there. You're getting a little bit of a dance going on. Happy to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah. That's fun. It, it's so much fun to get to use this kind of red. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I had I had to add some orange. <laughs> oh, I, I I did too. I I started off here with um with just sort of you know straight up red red and. It is, it's a warm, there's, there's a real warmth to this. Yeah. And um, that really helps us kind of get that, 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 that beautiful, beautiful color. Um, I'm gonna try to get a bit of the wing in there so I can get some blue in. That's my, uh, yeah, that's that my mission. If I can turn him around so you can see the, the blue green. Um, oh, that's oh. Well, I'm fine. There he is. There yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, look problem. at that. Look at that. That is. Yeah. Well, that's, that's really special. And it's also fun to see those without the, the clipped wings, to see those, that full, uh, those full primary feathers there. Oh, yeah, Tiki, if you feel like it, if you feel like spreading those wings. Sometimes yeah, he'll fly really if I do this, but I don't know if he'll do it today. Oh, and there's a one particularly beautiful feather, I think, that you can see it very clearly uh, on this yes. hanging down there. It definitely has that orangey gold color to it. You notice I'm very careful oh, with where I point my fingers and things around the bird. Uh, well, once bitten. Can you put your wings out? Come on. Let's fly. Let's fly. Um, uh, Sherry uh, had uh, questions or, or or comments or or, or thoughts, something to to to, to share. Uh, Sherry, did you want to? Do you yes. have a question for? It's a question because I noticed, especially on the chest, that is is Tiki molting some, or oh, is I mean, it always that? No, yeah, I mentioned that. Uh, oh, maybe I didn't mention that. Uh, during the Zoom, uh, the birds will pick at themselves uh, if they're, you know, feeling unhappy or whatever. So, and my excuse is it's summertime and we've been real busy with some projects and so on. So he hasn't gotten the same attention that he gets through most of the rest of the year. So he's been pulling out a few feathers there on his breast. And I mentioned that you'll find in fairy tales too the the stories of the like the stork that picked its breast to until the blood flowed, uh, and eventually died because of a broken heart. Mm. Uh, so it's it's a you know it's in our folklore even this incredible uh, uh, need the of that certain birds have for. Uh, for the love and attention that that uh, they require it, you know. So, uh, sadly, he's had a little bit of a time when we've been building a patio. So, <laughs> he's got a little white mark on his uh, breast. <laughs> Don't you? Yeah, you pulled your feathers there. Yes, you did. Can I step up? That's a very good observation there, Sherry. Can you step up? Um, Let's see, does, uh, is there anybody else that would like to share um, a, uh, a, 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 share a picture with Tiki? Hello. Hello. Uh, Chris, oh, we've got some uh, fun, uh, fun head angles here. Um, let's bring this in. Ah, uh, 
Nice. Wow. Tiki. Yeah, that, so that, I just wanted to try and get the angles rather than the colors. Mm -hmm. okay. And didn't quite get the. <laughs> yeah. Thank those, you those, for the stories. Oh. Yeah, I, I love the the the, the three quarter views in in there. You really do get the sense of that that big kind of. I don't know, almost, you know, pachycephalosaur forehead of this thing. Um, you know, that, 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 where, where the, the, the feathers really stick out there in front of its face. Yeah, yeah. It fascinates me that, that he can change it so much, his expression. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Very fun. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Chris, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah, the, the strategy of having multiple drawings all kind of going at one time is so effective. Um, then otherwise you find yourself just waiting and waiting and waiting for the, you know, will you please come back into that same pose that I had started? And somehow when you, when you, when you do that, somehow they can tell and, and, uh, and, and, and they never do. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, is there anybody else that wanted to share uh, uh, share a picture with 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 Tiki? I'll I'll do a little share. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm going to add spotlight in here. So this is where, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, that's why. So, oh, wow, Tiki, Tiki, Tiki. Had, um, had, had, a, had a bunch of, um, oh, hello. hello. Uh, you know, this, this is, was just such a treat to, be able to, to 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 play with this bird and, and getting to put um getting to put all of that red on when do we get to do that i mean when do we get to bust out our red paint to this degree <laughs> that's just that's just fun um i'm going to remove my spotlight um, is there anybody else that would uh, like to, to, to share um, a Macaw moment? Uh, Ray Bonto, great to see you. Hi, so these were the first parts. But I like the way you, you mix those colored pencils to get, uh, you can really just sort of see you thinking on the page. Ooh. And then we've got Tiki time. Oh, this is cool. Yes, yes, Ooh. yes, yes. Just bouncing around from one drawing to the next. You'll notice drawings in different states of completion. Right, so some worked out more, others um, just, you know, uh, you know, a few pencil lines, and then that drawing doesn't continue. Um, but all of that, uh, you know, th that that then allows you to to move as the parrot moves. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There we go. Green wing there. Yes. Yes. Oh, so well observed. You've got. You've noticed that the um, those lesser coverts up in there. You've got the red in there and um, green on some of those scapulars on the back. That blue in the wing. Um, blue on some. Uh, green on some of those medium coverts. So you're really looking at 
the, the parts of the bird. And um, I can sort of see your bird understanding um, in that wing. That's really fun to see. Thank you. Um, and all right. Well, in just a moment, I'm going to be turning off the recording. Um, some people might want to share, but might not feel comfortable being on the recording. Um, before I do, I just want to um, thank you uh, uh, again, Shannon, for, for, for joining us with our little friend Tiki here. It is, has just been a, a delight to spend some live time with the bird and also hear about your experience of doing this. I think there's also the, the points that you made about conservation of these animals. Um, endangered, you mentioned two critical threats. One is habitat loss. And that is the principal cause of extinctions worldwide. Um, we are uh, destroying the places where animals live. And then these critters also getting the direct hit from the pet trade. And so thinking about the sourcing of, of an animal. Here, you've got a rescue animal, mm -hmm. right? Um, so this was one that was brought into somebody's home. They couldn't handle it. And you stepped up to that. That's a huge responsibility to, to take it. You've got now a perpetual three-year-old running around your house. <laughs> yep. and, um, and it may outlive all of us. Yep. <laughs> um, but the... But so I, I, I respect your commitment to the, 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 uh, to the to taking care of this animal. Um, but also let's think about our roles as human beings in being stewards of protecting um, the wild creatures around us and the habitats that support them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having Tiki and I on. Can you say thank you? He doesn't say thank you. <laughs> we'll take that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's great.